Here at Triple Jump, we love it when games sell well. It means the industry is healthy and that talented developers will have the funds and freedom to make even more games. And more games means more fun. It also means less money, sleep, socializing, exercise, and personal hygiene, but who cares about any of those things? Over the course of the industry's history, some of the most prominent franchises have moved absurd numbers. But there are always those black sheep that didn't quite fly off the shelves as quickly as expected. They all probably still made the kind of money that I can only dream of, but for whatever reason, they sit at the bottom of their particular franchise's sales charts, and it's those titles that we're looking at for today's list. For the sake of simplicity, we're not including remakes, collections, or digital-only games, mainly due to incomplete sales data. And also, for some entries, we've been forced to omit spin-offs and stick to the mainline games in the series, but we will point that out when we get there. Right then, let's look at some games that sold worse than other games in their franchise so that you can then go out and buy them in droves just to make this video look obsolete and me look like an idiot. I'm Peter the Idiot from Triple Jump, and here are 10 worst-selling games in major franchises. Number 10. Pokemon Crystal – 6.39 million copies we're kicking off our list with a venerable franchise that shows absolutely no signs of slowing down, even if some of its titles haven't sold as well as others. Due to incomplete sales data on many of these series' more obscure or region-locked spin-offs, we're only looking at the mainline Pokemon games for this entry, and let me be the first to tell you right now, the lowest-selling mainline Pokemon game still did numbers that many franchises could only dream of. Pokemon Crystal was originally released for the Game Boy Color in Japan in the year 2000. It more or less follows the same story as its predecessors, Pokemon Gold and Silver, but legendary beast Suicune plays a more prominent role in the proceedings. Gold and Silver's gameplay is also carried over, but a few new features have been added, including allowing players to choose their gender of their character for the first time. I guess Game Freak finally figured out that girls play games too. Anyway, as previously mentioned, Pokemon Crystal's sales figures were still nothing to sniff at, with over 6 million units shifted worldwide. That makes it the highest-selling, lowest-selling game on our list, by the way, and that is really a strange accolade to win, isn't it? C congratulations, I guess? Number 9. Super Smash Bros. for Wii U – 5.38 million copies Back in the late 90s, someone at Nintendo thought it would be cool if all of their most prominent mascot characters beat each other up, and the Super Smash Bros. series was born. The original was released in 1999 for the N64, and gave fans the hitherto unheard of opportunity to play as the likes of Mario, Link, Samus, and Kirby in beautifully chaotic but supremely balanced free-for-all combat. This original title sold over 5.5 million copies, and set the stage for some far more impressive sales performances to come, with the series as a whole reportedly shifting over 70 million units. In 2014, Nintendo released two versions of Super Smash Bros, one for the 3DS, which did well, and one for the Wii U, which did as well as it could considering what it was up against. We all know Nintendo's Wii U failed to capture the interest of the wider gaming public. It shifted around 13 million units worldwide, which when compared to the Wii's 101 million and the Switch's 117 million and counting, is but a drop in the ocean. Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U – that's its full official name, by the way – was still a great entry into the franchise, but like a Mewtwo accidentally falling off Brinstar depths, it was let down by its platform. <laughs> okay, number 8. Number 8. Final Fantasy XI – 1.77 million copies for the same reasons stated in the Pokemon entry, we're sticking to the mainline Final Fantasy games for this dip into the highs and lows of Square's flagship series. The franchise that reportedly dragged the publisher out of the jaws of looming bankruptcy, Final Fantasy has gone from strength to strength since its 1987 debut, and the worst-selling mainline game in the series still made the publisher plenty of gill. Reportedly selling just under 2 million copies, 2002's Final Fantasy XI was a 
huge departure for the series. This early embracer of the MMO craze tried to entice players to explore its world alongside like-minded adventurers, and incorporated many familiar Final Fantasy tropes into an online multiplayer setting. Successful despite its relatively low sales, Final Fantasy XI was quietly paving the way for 2010's Final Fantasy XIV. This second bite of the online cherry initially threatened to replace its predecessor as the lowest selling game in the franchise, but the release of 2013's A Realm Reborn saw its sales soar to a cool 10 million and counting, making it more successful than many of the franchise's single player offerings. Final Fantasy XI took that first scary step though, and will be remembered as a pioneer despite sitting at the bottom of the Final Fantasy sales pile. Number 7. Uncharted Golden Abyss – 1.62 million copies Naughty Dog's renowned Uncharted series takes players on globe-trotting escapades filled with devious traps, priceless treasures, unscrupulous mercenaries, and the occasional supernatural entity. Channeling the likes of Indiana Jones and Tomb Raider, Nathan Drake's exploits have captured the imaginations of armchair adventurers since 2007, when Uncharted Drake's Fortune was released on the PS3. Throughout its history, the swashbuckling series has never been short of eager customers, and the franchise as a whole has reportedly shifted almost 45 million units since its inception. That's a lot of treasure hunting, but which title contributed the least to this dizzying number? Well, it was Nathan Drake's handheld escapade, Uncharted Golden Abyss for the Vita. Praised for its great graphics, interesting story, and gameplay that translated well from its home console roots, Uncharted Golden Abyss delivered on quality, even if some observers were displeased with the touchscreen implementation. Alas, likely due to the Vita's limited success, it still lagged behind the next worst-selling Uncharted game by around 750,000 units, 2017's Uncharted 4 expansion turned full release Uncharted Lost Legacy. It's a shame, because the game is great, and we think that hanging out with a pocket-sized Nathan Drake sounds like a wonderful way to spend a few evenings. Number 6. God of War – Ghost of Sparta – 1.2 million copies Angry Dad Kratos has a storied history of brutalizing figures in Greek and Norse mythology, and us gamers have been with him every step of the way. The original trilogy cemented the series' legendary status, and the franchise's most recent addition, God of War Ragnarok, is a bona fide blockbuster that has the stellar sales performance of the 2018 reboot in its sights. As a result, we once again have to look to the handheld world to see which title in the series raked in the least cash. God of War Chains of Olympus and its sequel, Ghost of Sparta, were originally released on PSP, and while the former amassed a reported 3 million sales, the latter only just topped 1 million, making it Kratos' least played adventure. Released in 2010, Ghost of Sparta reviewed well and was particularly praised for its spectacular visuals. It also gave players their sole chance to interact with Deimos, Kratos' brother, and even team up with him to take on creepy death god Thanatos. But none of this could save it from becoming the lowest selling game in the series. I know Kratos has mellowed these days, but it's best not to mention Ghost of Sparta's performance to him. Or Deimos, for that matter. Or anything, really. Just just leave him alone. Number 5. Forza Motorsport 6 – 1 million copies Microsoft's most prominent racing game franchise is a force to be reckoned with in the driving game world. The series has seen consistent, high-quality titles released almost yearly, and with the birth of Forza Horizon in 2012, it's split into two distinct camps, the fun-loving open-world Horizon games and the more serious track-based motorsport titles. The original Forza Horizon was not the franchise's lowest selling entry, however, despite being a tentative step in a new direction. Neither was the original Forza Motorsport. It's not even one of the more recent Forza games such as Horizon 5, whose sales would have been affected by the soaring popularity of Game Pass. No, 2015's Forza Motorsport 6 takes this particular dubious honour, just about shipping 1 million copies. 
It's not quite clear why, as it was a huge improvement over Forza Motorsport 5, which was very light in content compared to what series fans had been used to. Also, Forza Motorsport 7 managed to eclipse 6's sales, so series fatigue and growing popularity of Game Pass can't really be blamed either. It was released in the same year as Rocket League, though, so it was probably because you can't leap around and smash into giant balls in this game. Yeah, that'll be it. Mystery solved. Number 4. The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures 0.81 million copies The Legend of Zelda is one of the most beloved and respected franchises of all time, but even with masterpieces like Breath of the Wild and Ocarina of Time in its library, the series has been unable to maintain a consistent level of sales throughout its lifespan. Interestingly, the game at the bottom end of the Zelda sales charts represents Nintendo trying to get players to search for rupees and heart pieces with their friends. The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures was released on the GameCube in 2004. This multiplayer-focused title presents traditional Zelda gameplay tweaked to host up to four players, and was based on the Four Swords mode included in the GBA version of A Link to the Past. The main game mode was a cooperative episodic campaign known as Hyrulean Adventure, but a competitive shadow battle mode was also included. Unfortunately, to access all of this multiplayer fairy fun, each player needed a GBA and a Link cable, essentially shutting out all but the most dedicated Nintendo fans from what was undoubtedly a high-quality gaming experience. The fact is, four Game Boy Advances would set you back a lot of rupees in 2004, and most of us hadn't found the adult's wallet yet. Number 3. Halo Wars 2 0.51 million copies In the not-so-distant past, the Halo series was setting records for video game sales, with Halo 3 sitting on top of the pile, reportedly amassing almost 15 million copies sold. Even the least successful Halo FPS, the narrative-driven Halo 3 spin-off ODST, managed to shift around 3 million copies. Perhaps unsurprisingly, though, the lowest-selling titles in the franchise's history are its forays into different genres. Released in 2017, real-time strategy Halo Wars 2 was a sequel to 2009's Halo Wars. While Microsoft used the expertise of Age of Empires developers Ensemble Studios on the original, for Halo Wars 2 they got Creative Assembly involved. These guys are most famous for the Total War series of strategy games and definitely know their stuff when it comes to top-down battlefields, but despite reviewing well and expanding on its predecessor, Halo Wars 2 failed to match the original title's sales. While the Halo franchise has certainly faded in prominence over the years, the fact that many fans could pick up the game for free on Game Pass was probably the biggest reason why the title didn't perform well at retail. <laughs> well, I think real Halo fans would buy an extra copy even if they already had it for free, so there. Number 2. Grand Theft Auto Advance 0.24 million copies the Grand Theft Auto series has shifted hundreds of millions of copies, enthralling fans with its cinematic moments, open-world mayhem, great visuals, and lauded soundtracks since its humble 2D beginnings. Things have moved on a lot since then, and the series has only gotten stronger, with more recent titles adding online multiplayer modes to keep players' thumbs and wallets occupied while they wait impatiently for the next installment. To find the franchise's lowest points, you have to look at its handheld offerings. Most of these still sold very well, particularly on the PSP, with games like GTA Liberty City Stories managing to shift almost 8 million copies. GTA Chinatown Wars for the DS underperformed for a Grand Theft Auto game, especially considering its status as the best-reviewed game on that console, but it's still not at the bottom of the list. No, the lowest-selling game in the GTA franchise is also its lowest rated. Grand Theft Auto Advance for the GBA sits on a 68% Metacritic average and looks, sounds, and plays like a chopped-down version of the 1997 original. It shifted only a quarter of a million copies, which is absolutely shocking compared to the rest of the series. Don't worry, though, despite its lack of success on Nintendo handhelds, the franchise has oh, just about managed to stay afloat. Oh, best of luck, Rockstar. And number 1. Fallout Brotherhood of Steel 
0.12 million copies. Since 1997, the Fallout series has gone from a popular but somewhat niche RPG series to a near-forgotten curio to one of gaming's foremost behemoth franchises. Unsurprisingly, its entry into this list comes from that curio period in the irradiated no-man's land between Fallout 2 and Fallout 3. Here you'll find the genre-shifted console debut Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, the game that languishes at the bottom of the Fallout series sales charts. Coming six years after the success of Fallout 2 on PC, Fallout Brotherhood of Steel was released in 2004 for Xbox and PS2, and binned the franchise's turn-based roots in favour of a more action-oriented combat style. It also got rid of the open-world exploration, and it streamlined or changed many other aspects that made the series unique. Basically, it was too much of a change to entice fans of the older games, and didn't really stand out enough to win over any new fans. Reviewers derided its repetitive gameplay and bland, maze-like environments, and many noted that the game went needlessly overboard with its incessant swearing. Unnecessary curse words aside, the only way Fallout Brotherhood of Steel managed to live up to its respected name was by falling out of the sales charts. Okay, that's the end of the list. Bye.